Hey, this is um, my Squire Bronco bass that I modified, that I've now dubbed the Bronco of Doom. Um, as I was modifying and doing this project, YouTube was very helpful to me, uh, watching other people and um, talk bass as well was great. So I decided just to make a little video where I can share what I've learnt and um, help anyone else who's interested in doing a Bronco mod project. So we'll start down here with the pickup. Um, I ended up going with an Aguila DCB. Now I already had one spare um, from when I built a warm off base. I bought them as a pair and uh, I think it worked out cheaper to buy two of them. You know, like there's a discount for getting a, a set instead of just one. And I knew I was going to do a Bronco project, so I bought them as a pair and um, kept it for this. And it sounds monstrous. It's really cool. Um, being a short scale bass, I think it pulls the strings a bit more because of the, the lower tension. So I've had to like really sit it low. So the action, not the action, the pickup height is really really low but um it does sound great where it is so the bass it doesn't actually um fit a soap bar pickup like this unless you route the body out so i had to pull out a chisel and um give it a go um i didn't really you know plan it too much mostly just eyeballed it and constantly kept checking my work but yeah just use the chisel to chisel out some of the um the wood the wood's pretty soft in the body um and really easy to work with so it wasn't too much of a problem but there was a problem in that the the way that the route pre-existed was way too deep to do a um direct mount of the soap bar into the body so i actually had to carve a piece of pine and glue it in to get to the right sort of height for the pickup to sit in because the original pickup um is like a strat style and it floats in the pick guard um so it doesn't matter how big the cavity is underneath so again if you're thinking about doing this um there's quite a few steps involved to get the pickup into a sweet spot. Um, moving on from that, um, this bridge down here, yeah, look, it's just a bridge I bought off eBay from China. And um, I'll do the good first. The good is that it's 18 mil spacing. Um, so the Bronco comes with 17 mil spacing as standard. Um, but it's a really shitty bridge. Um, really hard to intonate and all that. And, um, you know, Fender have the 19 sort of mil as their standard. So the 18 is a pretty good compromise between the two. Um, you can see around the 12th fret that there's plenty of fretboard still on either side of the outside strings. So you can get away with 18 mil spacing if you want to upgrade the bridge um, to that. Um, like, it's not really, like, there's quite a bit of effort involved in pulling those strings off. So you will be fine with 18 mil if you want something a little bit that feels like less of a toy. Um, when I got this bridge, though, the intonation screws were way too long and the saddles didn't, actually even fit in the grooves the cuts for the, the the grooves where the saddles kind of slide up and down because the screws definitely weren't you know made for the bridge they were just whatever probably parts were available in the factory or whatever so i had to cut the screws down and you can see um on the e and the d strings even as it is the springs are all the way maxed out just to keep the bass intonated so i might still need to cut a little bit off the springs and the screws on those 
um because that's just what it takes to get it interneted right now um all right so going on to here this output jack it's a pure tone um read up on them if you want um i won't go into all the features of them now but they are um, you know quite an expensive output jack but the features are pretty good and i think worth it and um for my next you know couple of builds i will continue to buy them because i think you know for a, a couple of dollars lo uh, more it's worth the upgrade for sure but check it out like do some reading on it um okay all the electronics so the pots the tone cap all the wiring and the copper shielding i bought from kiesel guitars i own um a few kiesels so i'm definitely a fan and i know that their components are excellent and uh, they used to do kit guitars where you could buy you know blank necks and bodies and kind of paint it yourself or whatever they don't do that anymore but you can still buy components such as electronics and hardware and it's the same stuff that they put in all of their basses and guitars so it's very very good quality um 500k pots um 0.047 tone cap and a nice real stiff feeling pot as well which i i like a lot um well priced as well for what it is um okay the pick guard i bought off ebay from a a, a seller called precision guitar um guitar is spelled gtr and he makes the um bronco shaped pick guard already but i asked him to please route the pickup cavity for this particular sized pickup and i sent him some diagrams off the aguila website with the exact measurements and yeah he cut the pick the pickup size hole perfectly um it was all good good fit good good uh quality pick guard too now going to the headstock the tuning pegs are also kiesel there you go um these are their premium base tuning pegs and they're a 20 to 1 ratio the tuning pegs that came on on the squire bronco uh absolute dog shit and i won't even save them for another project i'm they're going in the bin um they're so unreliable but these are great and um in other base builds that i've done i've used like hip shot ultra lights and go to's and stuff and they're all amazing too but i think that these are as good as the hip shots and they cost one third the price um straight from the Kiesel website. So definitely consider that an option. Um, I was a bit surprised when they arrived because I didn't realize how small the actual peg part of the, like the, you know, the top bit of the tuning peg was going to be. They seemed very small to me, but aesthetically on the actual base, oh, I think it's actually a really good size. Like it's, it fits really, really well. Um, the holes in the headstock for the original tuners are 12 mil. So you'll have to drill them out to 14 mil to accommodate these tuners. Um, but that wasn't so bad. I didn't own a 14 mil bit though, so I had to buy one. So that sucked. Um, but you know, you might already have that bit or you might know someone who has one so you don't have to buy one and that's definitely a better idea than spending $20 on a bit that you'll never use again. Uh, the strings are Labella low token bass flats, um, 45 to 105 and they're really good. They'll probably stay on the bass for 10 more years. They last forever. And uh, yeah, I'll give you some plain examples. I'm just um, running through a Mark Bass Little Mark II. 
those are my settings at the moment and just like a fender rumble 15 inch thing it's a cool cab Mm -mm. Okay, so the reason I built this was because I wanted a short scale flat wound vibe base for the studio and that's what it does. Short scale, flat wound, p bassy, but a little bit different as well. Um, so here's full volume, full tone. It's cool. Obviously, you're just hearing the sound of the amp in the room through an iPhone 11, so, um, you know, that's what it is. I'll go back up to full tone again. I'm in Australia, so these prices are in Australian dollars. But to buy this bass new from a music shop is about 300. And I've definitely put more than, I don't really know, but it's definitely more than $500 worth of components into this bass now. Um, to me, totally worth it. Totally worth it. I know it's a bit of a meme to, um, to spend more on upgrading uh, a bass or a guitar then it costs new but um i had so much fun doing it i loved nerding out over all the parts and researching every component um and then you know all the challenges that popped up along the way like having to reroute in here for the pickup and having to remeasure and redrill for the bridge 
um, redrill for the tuning pegs. Like it was just a lot of fun. And um, I took my time and I worked with my, my brother who helped with uh, all the soldering and um, wiring and stuff. I'm useless at that sort of stuff. So that was awesome that he helped me. And yeah, like I just really enjoyed the project. And to be honest, if I walked into a music shop and this was for sale for $800, I would really really consider it because the quality of the components on it now are as good as anything you can buy except for the bridge um and it just does exactly what i was hoping it would um it it's got a great vibe if you've never played one of these bases it's amazing how they've done the neck the, the neck is just one of the best feeling necks i've ever played um and it was kind of the inspiration behind doing this is just how good the neck feels so um yeah that was almost reason enough to to do it but yeah i really enjoyed the process and it is fun you learn so much more about your instrument when you have to put it together and as i said it's not the first one i've done um, so I've done a war moth one in the past. Um, I've got another war moth sort of neck and body coming as well, which I ordered during isolation when I was sort of bored and had, you know, access to the internet and <laughs> ordered a bunch of shit I don't need, but that's going to be fun to put that together. And that's uh, going to be a 32 scale. Um... But yeah, good fun. Sounds really cool. And it's just a, yeah, a great sort of studio weapon. Uh, play a bit of like samba or something. I don't know what the audio is going to sound like on your end, but it sounds massive here. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you want any help, you got any questions, just uh, leave comments and when I see them, I'll get back to you. Thanks. Hope you enjoyed it.